Welcome to the Office of Object Relations and the Museum of Imagination and perhaps even the Nursery of Memory. I'm glad you're here. I've invited you into this place to help reflect on the nature of show and tell, the gospel of show and tell. In this room are objects that help us remember who we are and I'm glad you're here so that there is perhaps something in this office and in the weeks that we spend together, the possibility of having a relationship with something here that will help you tell your story. Now this is an office, a room, a space of both imagination and memory, and it is filled with stuff. Now, stuff is a word that has a history. It is a word that holds many, many stories just this week. Um, it referred to what happens when language gets too small to hold the sadness we are feeling when something like a mass murder happens at a place of education. And uh, people say, because they don't know how else to express it, well, stuff happens. And leave it at that. But I'm inviting you into this room, into this time, into this space to enter into a relationship with holy human stuff, to pay attention, to take care, because in that relationship, perhaps, there will be a caregiving that we need so that we may thrive as well as survive. And so we begin this morning with uh, the beginning, with Genesis. And I would like to tell you a story about the statue uh, and the saint that lives in this office, and that is Francis. statue come to live in this office, in this uh, office of object relations. I found Francis at a nursery that was going out of business. And when I went up to see him, I saw very clearly that he was for sale because his skin was peeling. And if you know this statue, someone had stolen his birds. There's supposed to be a bird here because he is preaching to the birds, we in fact have a homily that has survived of Francis's, of a homily to the birds, and the bird on his shoulder someone had stolen. So Francis was for sale, very cheap. I brought him here and found an artist among our students, Bon Jong Ku, who took one look at this poor, peeling, suffering saint that was birdless and proceeded to return to Francis symbols, objects, intimate relations with animals that are here in what we call the forest. Bon Jong Ku painted on Francis's body as a sign of the relationship that this saint had with creation. Every creature that he saw while he was here at Drew, from butterflies to deer to our omnipresent gray squirrels. He then finished this and presented it back. This is an image of what happens when we care about the stuff of creation. This is a Francis that is in fact guardianship of creation, in defense of creation. The only problem I had when Francis then came to live with me and all the creatures um, has to do with historical record and 
frankly, the color of his eyes. Because in all the records of Francis that his order kept, there are references to his sparkling brown eyes. My problem was that this Francis had very pale, pasty skin, sort of a white oatmeal color, and blue eyes. It felt like he wasn't quite the real Francis. So another of our artists, Richard Romero, was invited to the process of what I might call a trans-ethnicity uh, work. What he did was return Francis to his time and place and the color and, and texture of both skin and eyes that would have been appropriate for who he was. And then it felt as if Francis was more comfortable in his skin. When this work was complete and Francis stood among us depicting this world, this creation, it so clearly is heard in the letter that Pope Francis has issued on care for our common home. Laudate si, praise be to you, my Lord, mi Signor. Laudate si, mi Signor. In the words of this beautiful canticle, the Pope writes, Saint Francis of Assisi reminds us that our common home is like a sister with whom we share our life, and a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. Praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us and who produces various fruits with colored flowers and herbs. So in preparation for this letter from the Pope that reminds us of what his namesake thought to teach us, care for our common home, Francis stands now as a speaking, living, relational possibility for us. There is one part of this statue, however, that clearly speaks of the suffering that the human community has caused. The way in which we have failed to follow the first commandment, take care of the garden. A way in which we need to be invited back into this care of this holy, holy stuff that we as humans have a privilege to interact with. And in order to show you this, I'll need to invite you to come a little closer and look at Francis's hand. When the original artist who helped recover Francis, reform Francis, uh, return Francis to a living relationship, holy human stuff, looked at his hand, there is supposed to be a bird resting here. And when he returned the statue to me painted, I looked at the palm of the hand and here where there were to be bird feet, an imprint, he had turned this into a wound. These bird feet obviously are wounds in the hand of Francis. And I asked Bonjour, I said, why did you do that? I thought perhaps he would simply fill it in, cover it up. And he said, because for Francis, this would be the wounds of Christ. This is Francis' stigmata. This is the way in which creation that suffers now would be imprinted on his very body. And this is why we, if imprinted the same way with the suffering of creation, will be moved into service to take care of this, our common home.